Hello friends, welcome to another story from the road across Canada. It's Bicycle Touring Talk number 90, brought to you by me, George Schlackheg. The one and only. Cycling across Canada is a big deal. Sometimes people ask me, what do you mean cycle? Motorbike? <laughs> nope, you won't catch me riding one of those. There's a story behind that too, but that's not for this video. You have limited time to get across Canada on your own power, unless you like riding in winter conditions. That was always on my mind during my whole tour, and it kept me riding pretty much without rest days. Last week I told you about my ride from Iron Bridge to Massey along Ontario's Highway 17, the famous Trans-Canada. I had been riding in rainy weather for days, and it was taking its toll. When I went to sleep in a soggy field in my little tent, I felt quite sick. Sore throat, mild fever. This really sucked, and I was partially in denial about it. On Friday, July 14th, heavy rain woke me up. I was grateful for being warm and dry in my tent for a minute or two until I realized I was gonna have to deal with the weather outside. I already had a cold and this damp field sure didn't seem like a great place to recuperate. Thanks to my heavy duty sleeping bag, I was comfortable and sweating for now. Well, by the time I finally got up, the rain had stopped, but the air was so full of moisture that you could see the water droplets floating around in it. Nothing was going to dry anytime soon, so I packed my tent away wet. I'd have to deal with it later. Uh, I got a little bit of the sniffles this morning. Yeah, it's uh, the effects of uh, three days of damp weather uh, and uh, you know, I, I camped last night. It, it was okay, it was damp, but I was warm in the tent and, and dry inside, but you know, now all my stuff is wet. I wanted to ride to Espanola on the Lee Valley Road, a secondary highway and the only alternative to the Trans-Canada. Not only would it be much safer, but it also seemed like a more direct route. I first made it to the local Shell station, bought a coffee and snack and asked the lady for directions. Simple! It was simple. I was all set. The road was actually great. It was paved, but not smooth and wide enough for the cars to go crazy fast. Traffic was light and I much enjoyed the ride through peaceful country. To my surprise, I saw signs that indicated that I was actually on the Trans-Canada Trail. So this is actually part of the Trans-Canada Trail. Uh, it's not a trail, it's a road. I just took note and shrugged at the signs. I have a very different definition of a trail. First of all, no car should be allowed except perhaps maintenance vehicles. Canada has a long way to go. Any trail signs on public roads are just that, meaningless signs. They don't turn the road into a trail overnight. Enough ranting, I got to Espanola pretty fast. There was a giant tiger store which was great for stocking up on food. 
Then I made one more stop at McDonald's for mm, coffee and muffin while connecting to the internet. I had just missed my daughter's birthday by a day. We were chatting on Facebook. Could I make it to Toronto by Saturday? <laughs> Definitely not. Because it was Friday already. The road continued through beautiful hilly country with lots of water all around onto various islands. I really had to pace myself when climbing even subtle hills. For the most part I felt okay, or at least that's what I kept telling myself. I was actually enjoying the ride due to a nice strong tailwind. Where would I stop for a meal? After a while I was so hungry I had to stop at a guardrail and eat a bunch of snack foods. A picnic table at the side of the road would have been a real treat. Just outside of Little Current I had to cross a swing bridge that closes once every hour to let boats pass. The whole structure makes a 90 degree turn to open up the passageway. I stopped at the visitor center to inquire about the ferry that goes from South Baymouth to Tobermory to connect Manitoulin Island to the Bruce Peninsula. It made no sense for me to try reaching it today as I was actually pretty exhausted. Thankfully there was a sort of inexpensive motel that was a blessing in disguise because I was in no shape to settle for my wet tent. Shortly after, I checked into the Hawberry Inn, a simple place that turned out to be just what I needed. By the time I got there, the weather had improved a lot. It was still relatively early in the afternoon and it felt weird to be done for the day already. After a short nap, I forced myself to walk to the laundromat with all my wet and dirty clothes. Little Current is a really cute little town. It gets lots of visitors. The atmosphere here was that of an upcoming summer weekend with nice weather to be expected. I could have thought of a whole lot of things to do and check out around here, but by the time the laundry was done, I was done for as well. Have you ever experienced that feeling when you've been up for a whole night and day and another day? Well, that's what I felt like at that moment. Everything was surreal. I really needed a good night's sleep and it wasn't even anywhere near sunset time yet. All I could do was walk back to my motel <laughs> and go to bed. I actually tried watching some TV but only to wake up around 11 to turn it off. I really didn't feel well. How was I gonna go cycle like that? I had to be in Toronto in less than four days because Barbara would arrive there on a plane from Edmonton. We were gonna go tour parts of the province together. Was a stupid cold or flu gonna mess up my Canada tour? Well, what if I couldn't shake it? Perhaps I've been exhausted for months but just running on adrenaline like a true adventure junkie. Now it was rock bottom. I couldn't go on like that anymore. Well, this is where I'll end this video. Passed out from fatigue and sick in a hotel room. <laughs> this one wasn't cheap and I really didn't want to pay for another night. What would be the solution? Was there any hope I'd be back to normal the next morning? Find out in my next video of this series, here in about a week. I hope you enjoyed this one and give it a thumbs up. Thanks for your support. Oh, and speaking of support, you can now buy me a coffee on Buy Me A Coffee. There's a link in the description. Of course, you don't have to, but if you haven't subscribed yet, that would be just as awesome. There are plenty of other videos in this series documenting a real coast-to-coast -to -coast bicycle tour across Canada. 
check it out.